partner from Argentina. He's a full research of Conicet and Privé Consultant. And uh, we invite him because he never followed the rules. So <laughs> we will see what we will present at last. Well, I have 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, it's not really that I don't follow the rules. I simply, uh, since some years back, uh, I found out that I, it was very boring for everybody when I held a presentation talking about what I did. So I tried to present since then what I'm thinking about it is worth to do. And uh, one thing that I've seen very often is that we seldom challenge our beliefs, it's more a philosophical thing, uh, but we tend to reinforce our beliefs in our congresses. So when they invited me to talk about this very hot uh, spot where everybody is around doing now, even me, environmental services, my first question is, do they really help? And uh, so my, my talk is, I don't have the answers. It's more like a question. Uh, is ever a piece of environmental awareness adding market value, and I'm stressing market value because it's a measure way of talking about value. It's not value itself, but it's one way of native forest. And the answer is that I believe the answer is no. Uh, I'm not saying that it's a bad idea to, to be aware of environmental issues. I'm simply saying that I believe that up to now is reducing the value of native forest. So I'm trying to, do, to make that point, and uh, I get as far as I go. If I get the, the whole way up to, down to, to the examples, we, we get there, otherwise we leave them for the discussion. And if I get that far as to get into some possible solutions, then I will be very happy. Otherwise, we take it with beer later in this afternoon. So here we go. Uh, during the last decades, we've been seeing a lot of environmental concern, growing since the 80s, 70s in Stockholm, up to today with a red, red class and huge amount of people working on these issues. Many lawyers and administrators. So we can say that uh, we have changed in most, and in worldwide we have changed forest legislation. We have been discussing a lot about forest management. It's a lesser one. Uh, well, research and education, today forest, uh, forestry schools worldwide are in a crisis and they are renaming themselves into for, uh, native forest or native uh, nature assessment or nature resources or something that is a bit more attractive, like environmental whatever. Um, this. So, but we have also been changing in the geographical distribution of supply and demand, the re relative importance of forest products and services. Also, market regulations have been changed in the last uh, 20, 30 years. And we have come to a point that we know that nobody believes in nobody, so we have been starting to certify things on a uh, theoretically uh, voluntary basis, like FSC, PSC. So I'm, I'm going to try to touch all of these things, and they are, of course, not at the landscape level. But if I have time enough, we will get that. And so later I will present, I will try to develop these points to see if we can agree on one of them, at least. And then I have examples of those down there. We will look at the forest legislation from the uh, Stockholm in the, in the 70s. We've been going to Rio, to Kyoto, to Red, and so on. And we've been producing a huge amount of literature and legislation that has dropped down to forest legislation in countries. And nowadays, you cannot find, I think, one country with a legislation where we don't find the world sustainable management. OK? Try to I didn't find one legislation in any country that doesn't have that word. word. Sustainable management is, by law, to be enforced worldwide, but it's not. Uh, at the same time, during the 70s, most of the world outside Europe has been focusing on plantations. They would be putting a lot of money there, and actually today plantations from Brazil, Chile, Southeast Asia are a main source of mainly cheap wood 
for helping uh, Europe. So we have uh, gone the whole way down, and because there's a lot of countries we really don't trust, and actually because the Swedish guys found out in the 70s that the best way to stop American products was environmental concern of Europeans, we got into these voluntary uh, certification schemes, which means that we have built building barriers to uh, product movements around the world based on our environmental concern. So this is the legal part. So we can discuss about if laws can be done differently, but I think this is the path we have gone legally on, 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 our, on our structure. If you look at uh, how we manage forests, and that is us, we could say that uh, uh, Northern Europe basically has gone through a long uh, history of uh, almost 400 years where they went from picking whatever they wanted to production and now today to uh, growing the value of the forest itself. Actually, we heard that the Swedish foresters don't want to sell their trees, and that is because they value the forest so much that they don't even want to cut it. Okay? At the same time, with the same paradigm, we went to the tropics. And we said we have to maximize profit. Maximizing profit is not the same as maximizing, maximizing value. Maximizing profit is actually op the opposite of maximizing value. That the Swedish discovered many long, uh, many years ago, and that's why whenever they model uh, their forest income, they run on a 2 to 4% internal rate of return. In the tropics, we ask for 15, 20, which should be considered blackmailing, basically. Okay? Now, uh, this is commercial plantations, maximize growth. Not even value, you maximize growth, violence. We go to the tropics, and then our environmentalist comes. We don't want those forests to be destroyed. And I don't want the Amazons to disappear, I don't think anybody will want that. So we, we change our paradigm immediately. And then we say we have to minimize disturbance. Actually, Minimizing disturbance was forbidden by law in Sweden in the 80s, uh, 1800s. Is that correct, Per? Yeah. Because the Englishmen were coming to Sweden to, to take all the, the nice trees, leaving the garbage, which was spruce then, and the forest was completely dimension harvested. So by law they said, no, we have to change that because we are devaluating our forest by minimizing the impact of forestry. Okay, so think about that. This is one parallel, this is the other. Okay, we are managing the world's forest in three different ways, with three different backgrounds, but we are imposing the same rules. Okay, that's about management. How to speed it up. Uh, research. Now, now it's really the core. That hurts me a lot. If we do any kind of, of uh, database analysis, we will find out that most of our work is centered in losses of tree cover, biodiversity, ecosystem services, global change, effects of harvesting, global warming, and uh, now environmental services as, as a kind of a core for everything else. Okay? So we are looking at the whole world from a conservative, very conservative point of view. Okay? We want the world to be as it should have been if we believe in Clemens. But Clemens have been dead for almost 100 years now. The world is changed, resilience is changed. So I think that we are really reinforcing the path of not wanting to change. In South America, it's still worse. First, education centers completely on plantation forests if you look at management. There's no formal education at the university level on uh, management of tropical forests. Okay? And most universities are doing relate, uh, research related to what you in Europe do, because the money is here. 
we want to come here, we want to talk to you, you're nice, the, the country's nice, we can travel, okay? We don't get funding, we don't even think about doing uh, research on alternative management in our country. Actually, uh, poor uh, uh, Guillermo here doesn't even find partners for you though, in South America. Uh, uh, Yale has a lot because ecological thinking is, is widespread. So now we change completely and we go to market. Okay? You look at the market, well, sorry, forest distribution. Most forests are not pristine. Forget about that. Pristine forests don't exist. That's a leftover from uh, my last talk in Euphrata. But basically, this is, is what the, the FAO tells us about the forest distribution. We have some plantations, we have a lot of secondary forests, and we have some primary forests. We, if we look at where they are, they are most primary forests in Latin America, Brazil, oh, this is the Amazonian, Europe, this is Russia, and North America, this is Canada. So most, most primary forests are, not surprisingly, where we don't find people. If we look at forest trade, uh, per capita, North Americans are the best ones in using industrial wood. Africa are the best ones in burning it to heat their food. Okay? And in between, Europe is balancing as usual. And look at Asia. Asia really don't use wood per capita. But if you look at the trade, the world trade, which is really what pays us all at the end of the day, China, or this is Asia, is the main consumer of the world trade. Where is Oceania, which is New Zealand, basically, partly Indonesia, uh, Europe and uh, North America are the main exporting countries. Look at Africa, can you see it? Difficult, that is here. And Latin America, sorry, this is, yeah, this is Africa, and this is Latin America in the world trade. Okay, think about what that means for, uh, sorry, think of the top one. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you look at, at uh, uh, what we consume, China, this is only China. China is the worst consumer or the, the world, world leading consumer in round wood, sawn wood, wood pulp, uh, importing, uh, recycled purple, and it's the fifth in wood panels. They're actually exporting wood panels produced by using wood from the US and Europe. If you look at world population, you can see that the hotspots are here in Europe. If you look at the forests that are not threatened, so those are the gray areas, which is Amazonia, sorry, Amazonia, the Congo Basin, the, the Northern European and North American world. We don't have people. I would like to have the map presented today by, by, by fires, because you can see that forests and fires are kept together, but only where there are people around. And if we look at the consumption of firewood and uh, the, the fire, you will find out that more, most wood is consumed by fire, not by people. If we look at restrictions, we, this is certification. This is a uh, flight. Very proud of not allowing uh, wood that is illegally cut in the tropics to Europe. If we look at FSC, those are the countries that are certified, and the, the, main, the main countries certified are actually Europe, and partly Canada, and, well, you can see it here, Europe and North America are the ones that really need to be certified. Okay? The, the third one is uh, Latin America, and it's basically all forest plantations have to be certified. It's part of being in the big games. And uh, well, here is what was to show you that basically, in a, if you look at the details in South America, the only 
certified forests are mainly forest plantations. There are some exceptions, though. That's the rule. And the same here, New Zealand is Radiata certified to China that reaches the American market. <coughs> so the question is, do we really trust or need these labels? So those are my key, key points here, and I don't know if I have a chance. I just prefer to open the floor, and uh, I can leave it with you. Here. Using the time for questions. Yes, no, I, I, I stop it here, and uh, we, I prefer to discuss with you these ideas, and then I can show you, as part of my answers, kind of uh, these examples. Thank you. So, thanks, Juan. Thank you. <laughs> Please. At the beginning, your first question was, uh, can you go back to the very first question? Yeah, is uh, environmental awareness uh, uh, increasing the market value of our forest? Yeah. Or so, forest? by market value, you mean the price, or what do you mean by market value? The price of forest land with forest. But if, uh, if the market value doesn't go up, but the total value goes up, so that maybe the exchange value hasn't, hasn't uh, increased, so you don't have a price premium for the certification, mm -hmm. but the firm now has greater lifetime value from the customer, the customer has increased their awareness of the impacts of the firm on the environment, mm -hmm. hasn't then the certification increased the market value? Depending on who you are. The certification really increases the market value and the total value of uh, Scandinavian forests. That's, uh, that I'm sure of. And uh, I'm also quite sure of that uh, the certification as a whole is decreasing the value of most tropical forests in, uh, uh, in Africa. By a very simple, uh, the, the most direct way, I work with uh, uh, strategic issues with the forest companies. They call me when they want to invest. Uh, ten years ago, I was working quite well because I was working with a mix, mainly plantation forests. The the guys asked me, "Is this safe? Is we should, should we in this invest in this?" They always said, "Okay, I'll study it." Uh, ten years ago, I said, "No, I, I'm only going to do this kind of analysis on native forests." I ran out of jobs. I went to research. No investor is willing to take the risk to put money into managing tropical forests today. But isn't, couldn't that also be related in some way to the risk premium that they're demanding for investing in that company? Exactly. No, it's, it's and the inflation also. So the internal rate of return mm -hmm. maybe is a lot, actually lower in the real Okay. Real rate. Uh, well, uh, we, we can, I don't know if there's yeah. another yeah, sorry. The, sorry. the thing is, about the uh, we're getting into, into risk premium. It's, it's a very, very fantastic thing, but uh, uh, forest as a whole, if you really want to add value to any forest, forest capitalization is based on having a very low internal rate of return. That is low profit, high value. High value and high profit doesn't exist. Mainly in forest, it's impossible because you have 100 years to, to increase any values. It's against the logic to use this instrumental value in forest. It's stupid. Uh, I mean, the, the payoff method is stupid for volume force. It doesn't work. You're always going to give a premium to destroy, and you will never promote uh, building up. Mm -hmm. It's mathematical. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay. Another one short question? Not? Okay. Thank you very much. Juan.